Good morning. It's Sunday morning. We've just invited you Facebook people to come on. I had a few people say, why weren't you on last Sunday morning? Well, we weren't, and uh, but we are today, so that's a good thing. And uh, we're going to be in Psalm 51 today. I talked to another guy yesterday. There are a lot of these musical people, you know, uh, that are in the... Uh, entertainment business and they want to they want to entertain people always want to call and tell me oh let me come and entertain your people i don't want my people to be entertained you say well, why don't you want to be entertained i want you to get close to god and uh entertainment ain't part of it hey you know what entertainment is it's worldly amusement and I, I, I doubt anybody can show me because I've studied it so hard and I've made a big decision here in recent, in the last year or so, that I will not have entertainment in a church that I pastor. I will have praise. But that will be you and I together praising God and get, lifting up our hearts to him. The, uh, the Psalms, whether you knew it or not, the Psalms uh, in the Bible, that's all the Psalms are is they were singing, they were sung, the Psalms were sung. They were sung, and they, they had instruments and playing with them, and they were praising God together. See, because God demands our praise. He doesn't entertain us, and he doesn't want us to entertain one another. He demands the glory. So uh, I would just sing a chorus. To God be the glory. Come on, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Who, who God be the glory, great things he gave us. I better open up my book. It'll lead you better if I open up my book. To God be the glory. You can sing out there on Facebook too. Huh? What pages? I'll tell you the page if you want to see. No, I got What what page is it? One sixty two. One sixty two. We're gonna finish this first. One sixty two. You can go to it if you want, church, or you can just follow me. One sixty two. All right, get your get your song, but we're singing. I don't want you. I don't I want you to get off. Get your song, but Marquis. There's one there somewhere. Marquis, you caught me. If you seen I was eating peanut butter. Oh, that was you. Peanut butter and jelly and eat uh, not jelly, just peanut butter and eating uh, Ritz crackers. I was watching the uh, YouTube preaching on the YouTube here, and. Uh, I like I like peanut butter on a rich crackers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, grab a songbook now. Chop, chop. They're in the find the chair. One sixty two. You don't want the blessing. I make you get the blessing. <laughs> Force you into it. All right. You got your songbook out there in the, in the audience, church? Yes. <laughs> All right, here we go now. You ready to go? One, a two, and a three. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin. And open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son. And give him the glory. Great things he hath done. 
O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he hath done, great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But pure and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he hath done let us pray lord thank you we thank praise you. thee lord we rejoice in thy wonderful uh, precious holy name thank you dear lord for the scriptures the word of god that liveth and abideth forever every word is true every word is relevant we dare not change it but look to it help us now bless us in the word we ask in jesus name Amen. Psalm 51. It's a psalm that was written by David. He wrote, I think, 90, 89 psalms, maybe. I think there's 100 and, 170, 160. He didn't write them all. Some people seem to think he didn't write them all. Asip wrote some uh, psalms, and, and uh, Moses wrote one. And uh, there were several others that wrote them, but uh, the, the, uh, he was the biggest psalm writer uh, in the Bible. So Psalm 51, you know, David was like you and I, a sinner. And I, David, he, uh, he had a, uh, he was spoken of by God in the Bible as a man after God's own heart. So I think, I guess, of course, God is no respecter of persons. Uh, he, uh, everybody's ever been created, got the same chance to get saved, got the same chance to get blessed. Like my preacher George Clark says, uh, if we will, he will. But David was a guy, a man after God's own heart, so he, he blessed him. When he was a teenage boy, uh, uh, he, um, um, he, he beat the mightiest warrior in the world, cut his head off with the guy's own sword. Saul, who should have been fighting him, fighting him, Saul was head and shoulders above all of his people he was a king but he was nothing like goliath goliath was the mightiest warrior in the world and they just sat back and and uh he come out there and roar with that big voice big powerful man let your warrior come out here to fight me <laughs> Saul was scared. Hey, you know what? You know what David was doing? You know what? Um, uh, uh, you know what David's uh, livelihood was uh, before he became king? What was he? He's a shepherd boy. He's just a shepherd boy. I mean, that's a that's a very low class job. But my grand, my grandson, bless his heart, I love him to death. He's always trying to milk me for money, you know. 
I told him, you, you get, I told him lately, I said, you got to get a real job, man. He says, you quit milking me for money. And, and, uh, <laughs> so he says, and this and that, and, and, uh, grandpa, he doesn't call me grandpa, he calls me papa, papa. I need a hundred dollars. That's what he told me. I need a hundred dollars. He told me this a couple of days ago, and I told him we could work. I told him he could work Friday. I told him he could work Saturday. And not, while he didn't work Friday, I told him, and, and, he, uh, and he says, uh, uh, Friday he told me that, so I told him, Saturday morning, uh, I says, what time can you report to work? And how long will you work for your $100? And he says, uh, He says, I'll be there at 10 o'clock, and I'll work till 1. I got other things to do. And he says, for $100. I says, that comes out to $33.33 an hour. <laughs> and, 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 and what he was saying that he wanted to do for $33.33 an hour was help me clean up. I need to do some cleanup in my office. I had the air went out in there, and thank God got the air in there, and now it's nice. And and he did some cleanup, and and uh, I says, you think you think I'm gonna give you thirty three dollars and thirty three cents an hour and be a little cleanup boy, a little nothing job like that? <laughs> I get anyone to do that for a few bucks, you know? <laughs> sure, he went on. Uh, you see, I spoiled that boy for so many years, but it ain't happening no more. Boy got to work. And I'm putting his feet to the fire. And then he's trying to get, I told him, and he's trying to get money. From, he tries to get money from Grandma. But you know what it is when he gets money from Grandma? You know where the money comes from? It's from me. And then he tried to call me, and then, then Grandma says, oh, Andrew's trying to call me. He's going to ask you for money. And I said, I ain't giving him a penny. And if you do, don't come to me for the money. You ain't getting it from me. I'm just telling you that. That's the way it is. <laughs> How'd I get on my grandson? Oh, I, I got, I was talking about David and Goliath. Let's get back to the, who cares? You know, my grand, he's, I love him to death. But anyway, um. David, uh, he was coming down there to bring some uh, uh, some cheese and bread to his big brothers. Big brother. Uh, and he get down there and he got down there and, and he said, what's the problem? And, and, and he heard this giant and the giant saying, cursing God. Well, what's the matter with you? He told his big brother. What's the matter with you? You let him curse God, our God, my God. Maybe it wasn't his big brother's God. I don't know, but it is David's God. And then the word got to Saul, the king, who should have been doing the fighting. He's head and shoulders about everybody and a man of war. And, uh, he says, bring that kid over here by me. They brought him over. And, uh, oh, they told him this too before he brought him over. They said, he's saying he'll kill him. <laughs> We're talking about that little kid. He'll kill him. He's going to kill him. He said, he says he killed a bear and killed the lion with his bare hands. Well, I mean, someone killed a bear and a lion with their bare hands. Well, I don't want to tangle with that guy. <laughs> That's a rough dude. <laughs> That's a real street fighter there, buddy. <laughs> I want nothing to do with him. <laughs> so they he called him over. And then and, and he told the king, and he says, oh, I'll fight him, I'll kill him. You don't want to kill him, I'll kill him. And, and uh, he says, and then he says, I, you know, I killed a bear and a lion with my bare hands. He says, I know, I know, they told me about that. He's okay, here, put my armor on. We well, tried to put the, the Saul's armor on, Man, it's just heavy and cumbersome because Saul was head and shoulders above it. This is a little teenage boy. That's all he was. He wasn't grown, wasn't Ted was full strength or anything. 
Uh, but you see, he killed the bear and the lion with the power of God. That's why he killed the bear and the lion. That's why he did it. And so he tried to put that armor on. He says, no. He said, I haven't proven these. You see, I've proven God over a long time, over 50 years. I've been saved and serving God. And I've proven him, and I know what works. I know what works. I've proven God. I got people all the time come up with ideas. Y'all do this, y'all do that. I says, no, I'm going to do the way God, God's proven me how to do things. And I says, well, you didn't try this. I says, if God had told me, I would, but he ain't told me yet. I, 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 know how to, I know how to get things from God, and I've proven him over the years. And so he said, these weapons haven't been proven. And, the, you, you, know, you know, a lot of Christians get into shenanigans. A lot of preachers that were great preachers just by the power of God, their, 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 their power of God started, this has been all through history, the power of God started slipping away from that preacher, and he didn't, wasn't getting it, and the, and the audience was falling out. He lost the power of God, so he started going to gimmicks, started going to special events and music, and and always had to have an, an, another big deal for the teenagers this next week or something, and and uh, and he didn't. But but David had proven, had proven himself. Uh, by the power of God and, and God, uh, uh, oh, I love that uh, Isaiah 40. You get as old as I am, you'll love it too. It says, uh, says, you mount up on wings of eagles, you run and not be weary, and you walk and not faint, Isaiah 40. And it says, the young men will fall out. Be walking. The old man will run. Woo Here's an old man running. <laughs> this old man can run. <laughs> I told my wife, she she's on to me. She knows my foolishness, you know. And and when uh, what is it? What was I supposed to do yesterday? What was it now? It as a small item, it wasn't much. And and I says I didn't. Uh, I said, I had that on my list, honey, and it was a small thing. It wasn't hardly nothing, you know. She said, yeah, yeah, you and your list. And uh, he said, you never get to it. I said, well, I'm serious. I, I, really, I, I This is real honest. I tell her honestly, too, but I don't think she believed me. I said, I really, I wanted to do that as a small thing. And I, 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 I figured something out. I did it a thousand times. And any any you ever work with a... Uh, uh, a grinder in your kitchen and you grind up the food and then you run the water and it goes down and put the hot water. You ever do? You know what I'm talking about? That thing. Well, they get they get clogged up, and what you got to do is there's a tool, and you got to put the, it something stuck in there, and you got to get the tool underneath it, and then get it in the groove, and go like that, and and it it's you can feel it's tight, it breaks it loose, boom, it goes. I've done it a lot of times. I've been trying to do it for for four days. I was trying to do it. I took up to forty five ministry, and I used to always just be able to reach down there and, and get it. But I mean, uh, and I just saw the Lord teaching me patience, and you just no need to have to get out. He taking you patience. So then, night before last, I worked on it for forty five minutes, and I went and I was praying to read my Bible, uh, and the Lord told me. Put your phone on there and take a picture of it. It'll be a piece of cake. <laughs> I told my wife, I said, hey, honey, I got it. I said, I'm going to take a picture of it. Well, I was supposed to do that yesterday, but I forgot. <laughs> so that was like late last night, and I wasn't about to get it. I was tired. I I got my, I got a, I got the, I got a pool of Bethesda in my backyard. It's my swimming pool. I call it the pool of Bethesda. I asked the teenager, what the, the problem with these young people, they don't know the Bible at all. And I says, you know what the pool of Bethesda is? 
Yeah, that's where Bathsheba used to bathe. I said, oh, shut up. You, you don't know nothing about the Bible. I said, you need to read the Bible. Well, I don't want to embarrass you. Maybe you don't know what it was. But the Pool of Bethesda, that was where the crippled people and the sick people, they, 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 they hung around that pool, and this guy was crippled for 37 years. And God had sent an angel down, and when the angel come down, the water would move. And the first one to jump in the pool, be healed. And that pool in my backyard, that's my healer. Because it's, it's low impact energy. And, and I, my knees I can work on and my elbows and all of that. I, 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 I do all that. So I got my, my pool of Bethesda. So uh, for, for a while, I couldn't swim. But I've been able to swim now the last few days. But I've been doing too much. And so then, you, I mean, then you whacked out at night. I was tired. So I wasn't about to go take a picture of that thing last night. But then I told her, and and, and, uh, and, and, and then I did this. Did, did, did you ever know? Did, did you ever do this? I mean, I got it made now. You know why I got it made? Wherever I go or whoever I talk to, all I, all I got to say is, I can. I'm 80. I'm 80. I don't expect nothing. <laughs> I play the victim card, you know. <laughs> But you know what? I can get away with it in the store. I can get away with it anywhere I go, but I can't get away with my wife. I said, I'm 80. She's all shut up. <laughs> she told me. <laughs> you do what you want to do. And she knows me, and that's true. <laughs> but anyway, David, he, um, and me as 80-year-old, why? Did you know, did you know that Moses didn't start his ministry till he was 80? He's 80 when he started. He led 3 million of God's people, the Jewish race, out of Egypt. Yeah. Led them out of Egypt and, and uh, dragged their sorry carcasses around the uh, Wilderness for 40 years. <laughs> he died at 120. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to make that, but I know he was 80. I know I'm 80. But David went out and he, uh, he killed. He killed. A lot of people come on the internet. Hi, internet. I'm glad you're all here. Um, uh, he cut, I, I seen a picture of this one time. I never thought of it quite this way, but a lot of times you think of things, but I, I could never think of it like this was, like this picture. Uh, it showed David, a teenage boy, and, and uh, uh, Goliath was laying on the ground. His body was laying on the ground with all his armor on and everything, and there was blood running out of his neck where his head used to be. <laughs> and David had his foot on Goliath and was holding his, his, his head up like that with the blood dripping out of it. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> I've seen a lot of stuff and I've been through a lot of stuff uh, in my life before I was saved actually, but that gave me pause to look at that picture. But that's actually what David did. He probably did. And uh, you know what them Philistines did? They turned tail and ran, buddy. <laughs> this was their number one man. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, Goliath, he told them, you got someone to beat me and you win. And, boy, they did someone to get him. Not, not only just beat him close, I mean, he beat him, took his head off. But this is David. And David was a man after God's own heart because he would do that. He could kill a lion because he trusted in God, but he also sinned like you and I. And many times I preach this, and I go into the wickedness of David's sin, but I'm not going to do it today because David was just a wicked sinner like you and I. David committed adultery and murder. You ain't no better. I ain't no better. I'm a little sick and tired of 
people trying to make up for their sin, you know. I was in Publix this week. I like to talk to people everywhere I go about Jesus. And uh, the, I, I don't know, I'm telling you this, you think it. You know, I play this 80 thing out. I'd already been swimming in the morning, and this was in the afternoon, and I was a little tired, so I said, I pulled my car in, and where I pulled my car in, there was a, a handicap car at Publix. You know, that you ride. So I jumped on that thing, <laughs> and I rode in there, you know, and, and everybody, <laughs> It's kind of nice, you know. They could tell I was older and you're riding on that thing. They'd be, oh, excuse me. Oh, can I reach up there and get something for you? <laughs> I get my own stuff. I don't have to get nothing for you. Know? But like my wife said, I play that thing out, that 80 card, you know. And uh, I should have, hey, right, really. What I needed to do, but I had swam a lot that day. I should have been walking behind a cart and pushing it. I was well able to, I, I admit that. But I just took a little advantage there with the cart and um, I got my stuff and uh, a fine looking young man there a carry out guy I mean a fine looking young man he probably 17 18 years old I don't know how old he was. look like he's about that he says you want to help putting this stuff in you and I had quite a bit of stuff I don't go shopping a lot but when I go I get the stuff I need you know so uh I, I, I had that basket on that follow car, you know, that you drive. That baby was folding more. It was piled up. And so when, when, when he put it back in there, he'd done a lot better job than I was. I was just piling it in. I mean, he, you stack it better, you could look, you know, be better. He said, you want help out there to the car with that? I said, yes, sir, I do. Yes, sir. You know, go on and then, uh, check out, oh, yeah, help on here. <laughs> my wife hates it when I do something like that. So I get him out there, he's a fine young man. He puts stuff in the car. I says, thank you, son. I said, uh, you going to heaven when you die? He said, yeah, I believe I am. And I said, uh, uh, what, 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 why do you think you go to heaven? And he says, I, uh, he said, I try to treat people right, and, and uh, he says, I do this. And I, he told him all about himself. I, he, and and he, I, could, I could just tell by his courtesy and the way he talked and the way he acted and all about him, I could tell he was a fine young man that was brought up right. And he told him about this and that and the other thing, and he went to church and all this. And, and then I, I said this to him, and he was, he was smiling, telling me this because... Um, he thought he had the answer. The young man thought he had the answer. And then he finished. And he, I wait till he finished talking, telling him I was going to smile. And I said, but young man, I said, what about your sin? I said, what about your sin? And his face dropped from a smile to, he went like that. His countenance changed completely. It struck a note with them, which was good. Because many people that will give me a big story about how great they are, and, I, and I, I ask them what about their sin, basically what I usually get is, oh, I don't sin much. There's a lot worse sinners than I. And a lot of people feel that way and they act that way, you know. But he says, I said, what about your sin? And his head fell. And he was... His conscience was pricked. He, he, God was getting his heart. And I was a young man. All the way you can get to heaven. Because you are a sinner and you seem to acknowledge that. Jesus died and shed his blood for your sins. God raised him up from the grave the third day. And you need to repent of your sins. And acknowledge your sins. And call upon God. Put them first. You need to be born again. I says, you need to relook into that. He says, yes, sir, I'm going to. He says, when I get off work, he says, I'm going to look on the Internet. I'm going to check out this born again. I'm going to look into it. 
I believe the young man did. And next time I go into that Publix, I'm going to talk to him about it. But we're all sinners. David, the fine-looking young man, I had some other. I got another good story, but I'll save that for another day. That's a good story, too. I don't want to blow them all on one shot. <laughs> I like telling stories. Jesus liked telling stories. He told stories all the time. <coughs> How far did I get in it? <laughs> what verses I had? I ain't hardly started. Let's get in here. We're all sinners. That's what I want to tell you, like David. We're all sinners like David. Now listen. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Aren't you glad God is loving kind? Yeah. He's not only kind, but he's loving kind. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Not just mercy. Tender mercy. Verse 1. Blot out my transgressions. He's crying for mercy for his sins. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. You see here David was already a saved person. But he needed to have his sins forgiven. As a Christian. You know you and I as Christians need to have our sins forgiven. As a Christian. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 3 says, For I acknowledge my transgressions. You see, you got to admit your sins. I talk to people all the time, Christians that are living in sin as backsliders and unsaved people that won't get sin. They won't acknowledge their sin. First of all, you'll never go to heaven or you can't be saved till you acknowledge your sin. Amen. And you turn from your sins and repent. Many never do that. Consequently, they're going to end up in the fires of hell forever and ever. But you and I as Christians like David, we must confess our sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive us because David reminded God about his merciful kindness. Yeah. I mean, his loving kindness. And his tender mercies. Not just mercy, but tender mercies. And so he says, I acknowledge my transgressions. So can you think of your sin? Out there in Facebook, can you think about your sin now if you're a Christian? Got to acknowledge it. If you've never been saved, you better get born again and acknowledge your sin. Amen. Verse 4, it says, Against thee and thee only have I sinned. Now think about that for a moment. Uh, he was particularly confessing these sins after Nathan the prophet, the man of God, told him a little story about the ewe lamb that got stolen and, and uh, the only, only thing the person had. And, and uh, David said, bring that man to me and I'll kill him. And, and Nathan, Nathan, the real preacher, not the pussyfooter, Nathan took his finger, and he stuck his finger in David the king's face. I mean, then the king was ultimate authority. What he said, that was it. He was the boss man. I mean, that was it. Uh, you, you say, uh, 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 what do you call it when, when someone's that? Was he a, a dictator? Yeah, he's a dictator. Whatever he dictated, that happened. And the preacher, now many other preachers did this. Nathan might have died for doing this too for later on. I'm not sure. I'll have to check that out. But Nathan put his finger in, in, in David's face and he said, this is just David said, I'm going to kill that man. He put his finger in his face. Thou art the man. That's what David said to him. I mean, that's what Nathan said to David. Yeah. Nathan said to David, and because David was a man after God's own heart, he repented. He didn't kill Nathan. He said, you're right, Nathan. And I hope you out in Facebook say today, Preacher, you're right. And I hope you in church today say, Preacher, you're right. Because I want to be like Nathan, and I don't want to condemn anybody. But I want to call people out that they can see their sin and repent and get right with God. Because you'll have no joy. You'll have no victory. You'll have no success. You say, but I'm born again. Listen. 
there's many, many, many people that believe in the Lord. And I hope you believe in the Lord. But there's many, many people that believe in the Lord that don't have any success. And they live a backslider's life. And they got hidden sin. They might even be here this morning in church. They might be watching on the internet uh, out there now. But they got hidden sin in their life, which God knows about and they know about, but the preacher don't know about. It don't matter if I know or not. You know and God knows, and you're going to be a miserable person. Yeah? Yeah? You're going to have sleepless nights. Amen. Yeah? You, 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 you're conscious. The men that wrote the Bible, they always, many times, they made this statement, I have a clear conscience with God. How about you? I got a clear conscience with God. I, I, I do. I, I took this little Bible last Sunday. It wasn't on the thing, but the people that were here in person, I took this nice little Bible. It's, it's a little small print, but it's a nice Bible. When I say Bible, that's King James. And uh, I put my hand on it last Sunday. Some of you were here, some of you weren't. And I says, I, I make the statement with, this, with my hand on this Bible that my heart's right with God. I got a clear conscience. I ain't hiding nothing from you. I ain't hiding nothing from my wife. I ain't hiding nothing from anybody. Because God knows anyway, but I got a clear conscience with God. And and I says, and I do, I'll do it again this morning, same thing. You said, you mean you're perfect? It says perfect. But I get right with God quick. Amen. I, I do. Every day. Something comes up that's a little, I might say that I'm supposed to be looking at this way, my head turned like that a little bit. I get to God right away and get cleansed up from it. I say, Lord, help me. And uh, I don't want to get in sin at all. I don't want to. I don't want sin to last seconds, even when I'm tempted. I just want to thank God. Thank you for saving me from that tempted. Tara's had a lot of that late, lately. I know she talks to me. God bless her. God bless her. God bless you, folks. Yeah. Stay close to your Bible. Have your heart in the position. Now, if you're a lost sinner going to hell, you can't. Uh, you need to know what a Bible is. It don't mean nothing to you. To it, it, it just you don't care nothing about the Bible. You ain't saved. You get saved, it means something to you, and you have a home in heaven. Uh, so, yeah, let me get this down here. He said, Oh, I, I want to make a thought on Now I'm going to go a little longer than usual, but I hope you don't mind. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. Now, uh, principally, sin is against God. But you know, uh, Marquis, the truth of the matter is, uh, you can pray like David, I can pray like David. But in reality, you, like me, we can sin against our mother. We can, we can sin against our mother. We can sin against our wife. We can sin against our children. We can sin against other people. So actually, when he, verse 4 is, against thee and thee only have I sinned. It means that the sin, the ultimate, the sin against God, that's the one that sends you to hell if you're not lost. And that's the one that keeps you miserable if you are saved because you haven't repented. Now, I can sin against you. I don't want to. And you can sin against me. But ultimately, the sin that we have of, be, of, of, car of effectiveness or what it means is because we've ultimately sinned against God. Do you, do you get that? We can sin against people. We shouldn't. And by the way, when you confess to God and, and, and then uh, uh, you ought to go to those people that you've done wrong and sinned against on this earth and get right with them too. Amen? Yeah, see, this is this is getting about the short hairs, isn't it? I mean, this is this, you're getting down to business. I like to get down to business with the Bible. 
you ain't gonna come in here and get little sweet sugar stick sermon out of Psalms and where you make you feel so good and you go out and they go out the door and 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 say, oh, it's such a wonderful sermon, Pastor Mark. I love this sermon. No, I want you to go out of here. Uh, I want you to go out of here feeling it's a wonderful sermon, but it's a wonderful sermon because it's got you to confess your sin and turn from it. That's why. People don't want to hear that today. That's why most Christians are backslidden and whirly. It's all about me. Nah. Verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now you see, it's a sinful world. And we, we come out of the womb and it ain't that long afterward when we willingly sin and do wrong. That's why mama got to spank us. Amen. And I get to... <laughs> you know how that is. Well, you've been through it. You guys been through it. And women are softer on the children, you know, and they don't want to... You know, you ain't, Terry? You been... You know, you... <laughs> but anyway, uh, I told them just like when with my grandchildren but my children I take care I did business with my children I mean they went if mama says don't do I do business with them I mean they, they know uh, they they knew they knew the rules they knew it was going <laughs> I won't even say that because you might think I'm a really bad person because I put them on monkey business with my children if I told you that you might never listen to me preach again you really want to know what it is I ain't going to tell you <laughs> but I was tough on my kids. I was Bible tough, godly tough. That's the way I was. And uh, I didn't ask what you had. But my grandkids couldn't do much about that. I had one grandchild. I acted up. I, won't I told her. I'm not going to name it. it. used to be a day when I named the child. I ain't going to name that grandchild. But I didn't, I didn't ride in the car with that grandchild. Because uh, I, won't, I, I wouldn't put up with the shenanigans. I remember the time I tell it some stuff when I won't even tell you what it was or whatever. I told my daughter, got two daughters, and try to figure out which one I was. I says, I won't ride in the car with this grandchild till you get him straightened out. And I didn't. But you know, sin is, is something that needs to be dealt with. And I was shaping in iniquity, and sin did my mother conceive me. See, that's why you have to <clears throat> you have to train up a child in uh, in the way they should go in their own life. It says uh, the Bible says this: the blueness of the wound cleanseth away evil. You know what that means? It means that you should spank your child on the butt that they bring a bruise. Blueness of the wound. That's a bruise. That ain't wrong. It's biblical. And uh, I believe in that for 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 a parent. I mean, not don't slap the kid in the face. Don't be pulling their hair. Don't be jerking them around by the arm. Let them know what the rules are. If they break the rule, you sit down with them. You tell them what they did. Did I tell you what to do? Yeah. Like just take for instance. One of you precious little girls, Marquis. You out here by Ridgewood, busy street. And they little. Little where they, they might run out in the street, you know. And, and you say, now don't. You got to stay away from that street. You only, only way you can go out in that street is... 
is mom or daddy or grandpa or, or, or someone that we approve that they take your hand and walk you in the street. That's the only time you go on the street. That's it. So all of a sudden, you're going on Ridgewood and they jump on the street. Man, you reach out there and grab them, bring them back and say, wait a minute, sweetheart, you remember what I told you? You can't go on that street because a car run over you and kill you. They say, yes, Daddy, I'm sorry. They might even, they, little girls are good, heart spanky little girls because they cry, you know, and they say they look so cute. And, uh, yes, Daddy. And, <laughs> and you say this, now look, I told you, you did it. I'm not going to tell you again. I'm going to spank you. If, if you do it again, you go, you, you know what? Yes, Daddy, I know you, you're going to get a spanking. Uh, you, you, you're on, you're on, war, you're on uh, warning. And so, they do it again. You sit them down. You tell them you love them. You say you're spanking them because they broke the rule. And you don't want them to die having a car run over them. And so you got to spank them. It's, oh, no. <laughs> and then when you start to spank them, you, your hand ain't even, your hand ain't even got to them yet. <laughs> your hand is just about to get to them. They, <laughs> they scream out like that. They figure if they scream out, that you quit right away, but you but you can't quit the spanking with with the beginning of the screaming. You, you, you quit the spanking when they're really crying. You got to remember, because what do you want to do? You want to save your life. You say, well, I never I never I never did it that way because I I got a book written by Doctor Spock. I don't know if any of you ever know what who Doctor Spock was, but he's the one that issued this time out and this, that, and the other thing, and and uh, you never spank a child. That ain't what the Bible says, so I don't care. You say, you say I'm old fat. I don't know. It's just the Bible's, the Bible's same yesterday, today, and forever. And and and, and that'll help you, child. And you know, I just remember I was in a restaurant in Tampa when I had, we had a mission over there for about three years. Uh, we still had it here, but we went over there and we were there for three years around And I was in a uh, smorgasbord restaurant and there was a, a family coming there with one child. And they had the, the whole restaurant tore up and messed up. One little child screaming and poking around and you'd be up at the at the place, they'd be coming right up at you and pushing you out of the way and digging in. You, you know, I mean, they're just terrible. Then, then another family come in, five children, five children. And the older children helped the younger children. And they went over and they prayed. <laughs> See, that's, that's the difference. It's a family that honored the Bible. There's no trouble in that. No trouble. And they were perfect. You see, the way you act at in the restaurants, the way you act at home, don't come out of that. People tell you, oh, they just not used to getting. No, they they do the same thing at home. They only ain't no different at home. They're tearing up at home just like they are in a restaurant. And uh, but I knew that, and uh, and I I walked up to that family. I didn't reprove the one with one kid. I just thought it. But I, I went up to that family, and I told that mom and daddy and, and those children, I said, such a beautiful family. I says, you're a Christian family. I seen you pray before you ate. And I says, and I congratulate you parents on how wonderful you did it. But tell you what, because that's a, see, that Christian family, I guarantee you, I didn't ask you, do you spank your children? Because I'll tell you what, once they know what's coming, you don't have to spank them because they ain't going to do it. You got it? That's what I'm telling you. I'm going to count to three. <laughs> you, better, you better straighten up before. One, two, three. 
Did you hear what I told you? Yeah, they heard what you told you, but you ain't doing nothing, so they don't care what you said. <laughs> you got to mean what you say. Say what you mean. Now listen. Let's get going here. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Did you know what uh, this... This was talking about a ceremonial ritual. Uh, well, not a ritual. It was a law. It was a ritual. But it, it was a law of of taking hyssop um, and uh, dipping it in blood for the cleansing of the lepers. You see, leprosy was always the picture of sin. And if if, if you just if you just said, um, "Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean." You got to understand what hyssop was used for. It was used for the cleansing of the lepers, which was always the picture of sin, leprosy. God used that as a picture of sin all through the Bible. And it's even today, it's a picture of sin. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And again, referring back to this hyssop and the blood and leprosy. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Isn't that what you want? Joy, oh, I want joy and gladness. You know what? I got it. I got it. I'm so, I'm so joyful in God, I can't believe it. Everything's okay. I don't know about you, but I know about me. Everything's okay. You can have it. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken waver. Why does God break our bones? Because we sin. Why does God have to beat us up? Because we sin. I'll tell you what. I, I want God to get my attention with just a little bitty switch. Just touch me and I get with it and repent. I don't want him to have to hit me in the head with a two before. Uh, or break my arm. Or cut my leg off. Or kill me. And I'm going to repent. That I can have joy and gladness. Verse 9. Hide thy face from my sins. And blot out all mine iniquities. You don't want to think about God when he blots them out. The Bible says this. Your sins and your iniquities will I remember no more. You know, we have a hard time uh, forgetting our sins and one other sin against us. But but God says he won't remember our sins anyway. Isn't that a good thing? Wow! Wow, I mean, we uh, because we, we're infinite and we have, we're here with this body that we have, we can't wipe them out of our imagination like God could. But we need to try to. Verse 10. Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We preached quite a while this morning. I ain't going to finish the whole thing. I'm going to stop on verse 10. Create me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit. Has you got a clean heart today? You got any, you got any, you got any anger and hatred in your, in, your, in your heart today? You got any sin in your heart, some secret sins that that you know about or maybe someone else knows about too that you're involved with in this sin. But uh, you, you, you've got that sin. And what you have to do is uh, claim this verse 10 like David did and like you and I need to. Create in me a clean heart. That means that you can do like I said, like I can do today, and don't get, I'm serious about this. I ask God, is there anything at all that ain't right in my life? Please show me, I'll confess it. He hadn't shown me anything, so I can, I can put my hand on my Bible. Get the little one, I got a big Bible, I'm reading that little Bible. I can put my hand on my Bible today, Facebook, church, and I can say, God, as far as I know, my heart's clean. And I mean that. I mean it. If it ain't, and I tell you what, that would bring you joy and gladness. Amen. I've got joy and gladness. 
I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart today. I've got the peace of God that passeth understanding. I don't know how them words go, but down in my heart. <laughs> Down in my heart. Oh, glory to God. <coughs> yeah. So praise God. Great Psalm 51. We have a great God. Make sure you're right with God. If you're a lost sinner, you don't know you're saved out in Facebook or here in church. Repent and trust Christ today. If you know you're saved and you, and you got some sin in your life, claim 1st John 1 9 I read the whole book of 1st John every night before I go to bed if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins cleanse us from all unrighteousness isn't Jesus a wonderful Savior aren't you glad our Heavenly Father sent him down to die for you and I God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We praise you. You know if you're saved or not. If you're not saved, pray this sinner's prayer with me. Have your sins forgiven. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Heavenly Father, that sent you down, Lord Jesus, to shed your blood on Calvary's cross, rose from the grave the third day, with all my heart, with all my being, I love you, I put you first. I know God sent his Son to this earth to save me. I put all my hope in you today. Turn from this wicked world, repent of my sins, and call upon you for salvation at this moment. Thank you, dear Lord, for saving me. Amen, amen. and amen.